What's up, Shredders? My name is Logan, aka Spiderhands, and welcome to an SP Reviews, where today we have ourselves some tracks off of an upcoming album from an act named Kuya Clint, the album being High School Sweethearts. And if we switch over to here, we have ourselves the first track on the screen, which is titled From Night, and we're going to listen through each of these three tracks from start to finish, and we're going to hear what we think. Starting with again, Prom Night, let's go, let's do it. So what I like is that he's starting these lines before each sort of loop of a section of a verse or like a whatever, you know, like it's helping to transfer between different repetitions of the instrumental backing, which has sort of this low fi uh, hip hop aesthetic of, you know, the, the kicks, the bass and the modulated sort of strings or something like that. It's kind of dope. There's some interesting ingredients in here as well. Nice use of call and response. Good job switching up that low end. I understand it's kind of awkward pausing in the middle of a section, but I was looking for an additional instrumental or something like that to kind of sort of uh, add a little bit of development there in regards to the backing part. Nice to have the enough dynamic range with that lead on the left side there for it to be a bit louder than some of the rest of the other parts of the mix. And it makes it feel a bit more organic, you know? Like you're afraid that I would ever get to leave your side, then it might be 
It's nice to add a little extra bar at the end there, just to kind of fade things out, to switch things up on that chorus. You know, like I read through the EPK and we mentioned uh, influences like Joji and stuff like that, and I can absolutely hear stuff from that here. I think I can hear the influences there. It's, it's a well-written song. The theme that we've got instrumentally makes sense there. The filtering on that synth pad thing going on kind of makes it seem almost nostalgic, like we're going back in time, trying to look back at when we were at prom, kind of with the references and the lyrics back to 1965 and stuff like that, it makes you think, oh, we're going back in time to where things were maybe simpler, where we used to hold each other and dance and everything like that. And you know, clearly it's a conversation between Kuya Clinton and the person that they're enamored with and that person, I think most people can relate to to that situation um and even if you can't you probably wanted to uh so yeah i think there'll be an audience for a track like this i think that the variety within the different percussive parts as well as the the bass line there the occasional sort of sparkly leads and amongst the mid-range kind of pads and stuff like that that there was a solid amount of uh, like the actual backing itself was solid there was just enough development there adding that extra like variation at the end of the chorus line we, we were very comfortable with the theme we had there i don't know if we could have gotten much more out of it but i think that's probably why we chose to to end it where we did so i think we're off to, we're off to a good start with this album nice work i should probably also mention as well that i thought it was quite the, the production's quite tight as well um there's a nice amount of dynamic range and i think that it's good that um it's good that we're not trying to sort of like suffocate and choke things too much there. Things are quite nicely leveled and, and metered as well, which is good. And now I've got track number two, which is Puppy Love. Let's go. Mm, it's solid. There's like panning of the symbols like we had at the start, I think, of the previous track, Prom Night. We, we like our automation and panning of instruments within the mix. Parallel major to minor. When class starts, suddenly my heart felt a warm and calm glow emanating by the door. A shy girl delights the world up with a smile. I mean, like the the phrasing of the lyrics and the vocals in this is is very sort of like it's common with a lot of like pop songs and stuff like that where we're working with the fundamentals of what's already kind of like within the field to try and work towards our fa favor, which makes sense. I mean, like, it's palatable. I think the guitar lines, like the jangly guitar lines there with the bass and the consistency of the drum beat, the eighth note groove there is, is, is a really good start. The progression is a little bit unusual in the background, but I think it kind of makes it more intriguing. I usually roll with parallel majors to minus with another theme, but that's cool. Things get hard to own. 
I think the thing with pop music, and I understand that I understand why people enjoy it. There's a, a like theoretically, you know, lyric wise, theme wise. I understand why people like it. There's a there's a lot to appreciate. Sometimes my videos get called reaction videos, and I don't. I understand that there is a reaction that I have to stuff, but it's often not as strong because of the fact that I usually only react when it's something that I haven't really heard before. It's something. That surprises or shocks me. I've done over a thousand reviews at this point, and I want to make it clear that just because I don't react to something does not mean that doesn't mean I don't appreciate what they're trying to do. It's just more that I'm either trying to pay attention out of respect, or I simply feel that I'm looking for something. I'm looking for the different sort of movements to accumulate and climax into something bigger than what it currently is. And I, I think I think it's great structurally what we've been doing with this track. I think that the ingredients within are palatable. The vocals are solid. There's even some nice harmonies towards the end of the chorus there that kind of resonate neatly. It's just more that it's a situation where I think this is what we wanted to do with the song and it's a good song and it's well written. And I think that I understand the limitations within it as well, that like there is enough instrumentally within vocally, you know, thematically here to carry it. I mean, again, the progressions, there's variation with them harmonically, you know, and the bass lines. I mean, like, we're very eager, I think, to get everything into the listener's, like, sort of face immediately. It, that, again, it's not a bad thing because I understand that attention spans are so much less than potentially what they used to be, although to be fair, you need, you've always needed to get the audience's attention one way or another, right? Because there's just so much competition with music regardless of the era. What I'm trying to communicate is that I think that, you know, l vocally, l lyrically, I think the song is about sort of uh, puppy love, being in love with someone, they know that you're in love with them and that you feel like you're kind of caught up in their web, you know, being pulled by a string, etc. And you want it to be more than just that, and you're willing to take a long way home after school and stuff like that, just to be able to spend more time with them and everything like that. You're trying to try to play the game of love, right? I, I understand the story. And I think it's good. It's well told. It's it's really um, it's like a friendly Labrador. It's very kind of easy and accessible to kind of get into. The again the the parallel major and minor progressions we had within the chords were cool. The drum beat off the bit that was in, was catchy. The the bass line had an interesting tone to it. And we had enough variation within the lead and mid to high registers there to keep us intriguing the whole time. I just, if there's anything, I just wonder if we could have done, added another instrumental layer on, like later on, or if we could have had more of a contrast between sections. Like if we could have even taken away some layers to really make stuff stand out. Like we could have really slowed down at some point. We could have gone like half time with the different grooves and patterns and stuff like that. It might have already been something that happened that I missed it, but. 
just just some just more because but that's the thing of course it, you know it's 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 a good song and i think that this is simply what they wanted if those are like kind of like the compositional sort of like directions we're taking with it they've succeeded at that the production solid as well i've got no complaints and then we've got a we've got seeing red with uh kuya clint and zy or zy i suppose guitars do you remember the times we had I was yours and you were mine We sneak out late at night Chasing the dreams away You and I in our own world Was this recorded on a different microphone to Kuya Clint's parts? In our own world Do you remember The time we danced each other on top of the world It was the sweetest night Like a dream come true I should have known it was too good to be true I think Zaya's vocals, if this is I sing, I, I, I would assume they would be, yeah. Um, they're wonderful. I like the variation of the mains and then like the little ones going from left to right on the sides and the backings. I think this, the vibrato is sick. I think that in regards to the presence, the pitch of the vocals in the mix, it works wonderfully. It's a really fresh sounding guitar tone as well. I think they DI'd the guitar. I'm wondering if they did the same with bass, drums or whether they're using samples. It's been a long time. Might be the same mic. Without you by my side. You're like a distant dream to me now. I don't see your smile When I close my eyes Got over these feelings somehow Of you not being around It's my fault There's no excuse from being hurt and ending up hurting you It's too late for This is cool. What I like about it is that you have um, Zai coming in with the harmonies very softly over top of what Q Clint's coming in after, like, kind of a, a previous section might have been cut short just to kind of go, oh, wait, what's happening? Oh, boom, now we're into this part. Now they're starting to come together a little bit. It feels like it's developing. I th this is a very positive song for me. I like this one a lot.
that there just for things to pause as well. That was kind of what I was talking about in the previous track. I think there's more range to this with the instrumental parts there. We're taking our time to allow Zai to have their part, to allow ourselves to harmonize and to allow our voices just to be by themselves for a bit without the instrumentation. There is more range with the layering there. I think that's one thing that I really appreciate about this. The, the extra, the, the uh, you know, like the compilation as well is quite dope. <laughs> Because of you, I don't like seeing red anymore. I know we've literally gone through the track. I'm just going to go through the verse one more time and just like double check things. Okay, so after taking a quick look through the lyrics for this track, seeing red from Kuya Clinton's eye, I, I think that this track is more about having like a really strong love for someone, having that intimate connection, that relationship there, and just things kind of maybe falling apart and you getting used to not not you know like not seeing each other not not being around each other and trying to sort of like come to terms with that the the seeing red thing um i'm wondering if red is like like the size of the shirt is like related to the red thing you know like um it's it's um you know or just like love or whatever it could also be the anger like seeing red and the anger and frustration you felt with things within the relationship i'm not sure but either way I think that this track was probably my favorite of the three. It was nice having Zai with a different vocal texture come in and, and harmonize with Kuya Clint. It was also cool that Zai got the first verse. You know, shout out to Kuya Clint for allowing that. Uh, it's nice. It, I always appreciate that to letting them be sort of like the first one to come in. And then for them to sort of like harmonize together was great. I think that the guitar parts alongside the bass and drums and everything, the strings and all those other parts you had in there were fantastic. The guitar as being double tricks was nice as well. He got, he had, I think he had some like harmonics and stuff like that in there, where it's kind of like a bit of a chimey effect, effect to it. It sounded like some of the instruments were kind of filtered, maybe a little bit too aggressive, like, like some of the piano parts. Like maybe could have had like a time. It could just be these headphones, though. You could have had like an extra 10 hertz of like low end or something like that. But aside from that, I think that um, it was a solidly sort of written track there. There was variation between the chord progressions and structurally. Things flowed really, really neatly. Um, we're going to talk about these tracks more, though, in the conclusion. And welcome to the conclusion of my review for these tracks from an ex named Kuyuklin off of their upcoming High School Sweethearts album. I, after listening to this, assume that this is about the relationships and love interests and everything you have when you're at high school. Um, going through each of these three tracks, um, Prom Night being that dance you spent with someone, you know, a very special moment there. Puppy Love being when, you know, like you were being let, that you were in love with someone and they knew you were in the classroom and you want to spend time out of school with them as well. And then finally seeing Red, the situation where like you, maybe that relationship ends, you know, you are no longer high school sweethearts. You are basically can't even really be around each other anymore. You're just not around each other anymore. And I think that, yeah, I think most people can relate to a lot of this. Most people went through high school and for better or worse, it can be something that really shapes you for the rest of your life. So I think it's really cool that Kuya Clint spoke about it. I think that's really great. Uh, the vocals uh, from Kuya Clint were solid. We were comfortable in here. Just voice showed a solid vocal technique there and we were very comfortable within our vocal range. We had held presence within the, the mix whether we were the main vocals or on the sides harmonizing with ourselves uh, or like um, harmonizing with Zai as well like Zai's vocals in uh, Seeing Red were fantastic I was really happy with how they phrased things as well just two really good really good singers like with within the genre they make it work very 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 well and I think that it made a lot of sense to me musically and the way that we 
uh, communicated made sense with the lyrics as well. So that's good. Things were tied together in a neat in a bow. The tracks were typically between like four and a half and I think this one, yeah, four and a half and five, five minutes. And that, those are quite long for tracks, especially when you don't have a massive amount of variation within the instrumental layers and you've got sort of a more traditional sort of verse bridge chorus structure, potentially maybe just a, a verse chorus with an interlude at the end. Um, often you'd need like a solo section or like an actual instrumental part just to kind of allow things to tide over. Granted, I know there weren't vocals all the time, um, but this is these tracks were very much sort of like vocal focused. They were meant to be the stories that Kuya Clunz and Zai were telling, and I completely respect that. It's one of those genres of music where you, where you need that. I, I, to be, I don't have an issue with pop music. It's just, it's just, it's often that you would not have as many like solo sections as, as you would in like other genres of music. So you rely on the story being compelling or the backing arrangement being compelling. And I think that, or both, ideally. Uh, and I think that the vocals worked. The, the instrumental parts we had here with a variation of kind of lo-fi since their guitar, bass, and drums throughout. It speckled across different tracks. We didn't have the same tracks in each piece there. It seemed like Seeing Red was more of almost like a ballad -y kind of thing, whereas like um, the first two tracks were more sort of like uh, lo-fi hip-hop kind of like pop kind of stuff. That's that. It's it's a bit it's a bit more trendy nowadays, and I, I think that it's good that we're exploring different things like that. Sort of appreciate it. I don't think there are any sort of like moments where I was uh, disoriented or disenfranchised from what we were trying to attempt, especially in relation to the lyrics and vocals. The, but talking about a few of the instruments I, I appreciated, I think that the guitar parts that we had were neat there. We were, they were either kind of like jangly lead parts or we strum stuff and sing red. Or, you know, we worked with like chords and bar chords and occasional parallel major and minor triads and stuff like that. We were comfortable doing some arpeggiated picked bits. And uh, mostly it was a supportive element for the vocals. The bass line underneath, whether it was like electric basses or if it was like an actual bass guitar, either way, they worked really well. We had interesting tones for them. They stacked neatly around the root notes of the chord progressions and were typically very respectful of that. We didn't get them sort of going too much outside of the box, but they didn't really need to. They just kind of needed to be a ground bed for the lower parts of the harmony there. The drum parts, um, that was solid. We typically work with eighth note grooves. So we had some 16th note parts there. We had variation within the drum parts. We didn't have massive amounts, but it was enough to not have the same beat all the time. We did have moments where the drums bowed out a little bit. And we didn't have the drums all the time and i think that having the percussion is a sometimes thing could be great although i think in the second track it was um puppy love we had the drums all off the off the bat and that could be effective too because it can just be like oh damn we're straight into the swing of things right so i, I think that was good and then the synth lines we had whether they were pads or like little sparkly key parts you know they were stacked in their mid to high range and uh, they typically either articulated the triads within the harmonies or worked to sort of illustrate some of the, they were almost like a, like a, an environmental thing, an aesthetic thing, where we're, like, we're trying to make the person either feel nostalgic for like older times, such as in the first track, Prom Night, or, or like in the second track, where it was meant to be like kind of playful or like innocent to show that youthfulness and that puppy love. I don't really think we could have done anything different with the instrumental performances there or the way they were written to improve the track. It's just me simply like it's it's like it's good for what it is. There were no like mistakes made with the composition. We stacked things well in the frequency spectrum. There were different like the, the themes were well built, you know, typically you know, it was like, there was a great sense of romanticism in Prom Night. Puppy Love again had like a playfulness to it and a kind of a little mild bit of uncertainty with some of the choices, but it, you know, seeing Red with the strings as well, like the weight of that and everything like that, it kind of made you feel like you were really struggling through it. Like, clearly we understand how to build a theme to suit not only the story we're trying to tell, but also to establish a sense of sentimentalism within the listener. We know what we're doing there. I think these are strongly written tracks. It's just, you've got a theme and we stick with that. And that is most of the song. You kind of get the, the, the song is the first 30 seconds, but it's four and a half minutes with slight variations. And I think that for people who are like, like that, they just want that kind of hit you know, that head of that kind of stuff, they want it very quickly and they want to just be able to sort of vibe along and sit with that. That's exactly what this is. It's not a criticism. It's just some, you either get songs which have development throughout the piece or you have songs which kind of give you that in that 30 seconds and you got it all. And that's one of those, that's what we have with this album so far. And I think that's fine. With the exception, of course, of the vocal development in Seeing Red, where we had Zion and Kuya Clinton and both, that was cool. I appreciated that, especially when things kind of bowed out for a moment and went back into the light final chorus. But yeah, to be fair, 
I was saying red was five minutes, so you kind of need to do it like a little bit more structurally to kind of keep it engaging for that length of time. But uh, yeah, no, the things were solid. The studio recording mixing mastering was typically good. I think things were pretty well balanced within all three tracks. I think they might have been a little, a little bit too aggressive with like getting rid of the lower frequencies and seeing red, we could have had like a little bit like more like kind of like 10 hertz of extra low range and stuff like that with like piano parts and such. But aside, just for a bit more presence, but aside from that, uh, it's good. It's good. I think the vocals, the guitar, bass, drums, synths, etc., were quite well niched in the frequency spectrum. Nice and wide in the stereo field. There was panning of vocal parts or so guitar parts or drum parts or whatever in different songs. We were very comfortable getting the things to go backwards and forwards. I think that was neat. It kind of helped you move around. It, it kept things intriguing, right? I just want to sort of clarify as well, just that we, it's not like when I say there could have been more variation, I mean like as in like different instruments coming in to perform different functions. It's not we did a lot with the instruments we had existing. I should I should note that, but um, there was dynamic range. There was a bit of dynamic range, which was good. It wasn't the same loudness all of the time. Sometimes going to a, like incomplete sort of like standstill, etc., and seeing red. It was nice and loud without pumping to so the bus compression, limiting his handled. I mean, effectively, this is my review of these tracks from an ex named Kuya Clint off of their high school sweetheart album. And hopefully, you enjoyed it. If you did, please go show us some love via the various social medias and YouTube page and stay cool and stay safe. Please remember to go show your local musicians and ask some love as they need all the help they can get with all the crazy stuff going on in the world. And I'll catch you in the next review. Spider hands out.